Greetings. I'm Stephen Fluharty, Dean of the School of Arts and Sciences. Thank you for joining us as we salute and celebrate you, the wonderful, the talented College of Arts and Sciences class of 2020. I also welcome all of the parents, family members, and loved ones who are watching with you. I hope that all of you are healthy and safe. I know I speak for the entire arts and science faculty in saying how much we have missed being together with you on campus in Philadelphia this spring, and how much we look forward to celebrating your graduation with you in person next year at Franklin Field. Our greetings now are intended to mark this important moment, but they are merely the first of our celebrations of you. Indeed, in the years to come, I hope that the class of 2020 will be remembered not only for its experiences this spring, but as the class that was so special that Penn honored it twice. Your time away from campus in recent weeks, coming as it does at the end of your Penn career, certainly adds an unusual dimension to your overall college experience, one that you will never forget, and one from which you have learned a great deal. But this period alone, which amounts to only one sixteenth of your arts and science education, does not define your Penn career. Indeed, I would argue the opposite, that the qualities that sustained you through these abrupt shifts in your education are a tribute to all that you have learned during the rest of your time at Penn. As the world has changed in unprecedented ways, you were prepared to understand the enormously complex scientific, social, economic, and moral issues facing the global community. And far beyond the content of what you have learned in your courses, you have been sustained by what I will call the habits of mind that you acquired through your Penn Liberal Arts education. This spring, you have shown incredible intellectual agility in adapting to new ways of study, strength of character in showing support for your friends family and our larger society. And you have demonstrated how much you value learning itself and the remarkable lengths you will go to in order to do it. These are the qualities that will serve you well throughout your life in whatever paths you follow after Penn. I am also finding that this period of time away from Penn, as much as I would have preferred not to have it, is making me appreciate things I might otherwise taken for granted. I hope that this is the case for you as you reflect on your Penn experience during this unusual period at home. I hope that the absence of your friends makes you cherish those relationships all the more and see how they will endure beyond college. That the presence of your parents and family is a powerful reminder of the love and support they have given you throughout your education. All of us thank them for that that our dispersal to homes around the globe right now underscores the incredible diversity that your classmates brought to Penn and what that has allowed you to learn from each other. And finally, I hope that your physical distance from your professors and their hard work in keeping your classes going online has reinforced for you the enormous value of their instruction and how deeply they care about you and your learning. There is nothing no virus and no amount of distance from Franklin Field that can take this moment of joy away from you. Wherever you are in the world right now, you are crossing the threshold from Penn students to Penn alumni. We will celebrate in person together in due course, wearing caps and gowns, but please don't shy away from phase ones of your happy dances now. You should be incredibly proud of all that you have achieved and on behalf of the entire Arts and Sciences family, I offer our most heartfelt congratulations to you on completing your Penn degrees. It is now my pleasure to introduce Paul Snagowski, Dean of the College. Paul is a distinguished scholar of biology, an award-winning teacher, and the superb leader of our undergraduate programs in the liberal arts. Members of the extraordinary College of Arts and Sciences class of 2020, let me add my congratulations to those of Dean Fluharty and all of the staff, faculty, and administrators of our school. Let me also acknowledge the obvious right away.
I would much rather be offering my congratulations at the podium in the heady atmosphere of Franklin Field on the evening of May 17th with all of you and your families and loved ones there in person as in a normal year. And I know that all of you would have liked that better too. Whenever we do get the chance to bring you back on campus for in-person pomp and circumstance next year, promise me you will all come back so Dean Fluharty and I can see you and congratulate you in person. In the meantime, I hope that my remarks and those of others in this recorded salute succeed in conveying our deep appreciation and our pride in all of you as you complete your undergraduate educational journey here at Penn. And it's very easy to be proud of your class. As you've made your way through the college's rigorous curriculum, you have also engaged with the Penn community, Philadelphia, and the world in so many ways. In their many co-curricular activities, members of your class have participated in academically-based service courses in Philadelphia, have conducted research in labs, field sites, archives, and libraries here at Penn and around the world, have served your classmates, the college and the university as leaders in the UA, SKU, and the Dean's Advisory Board, have kept us informed by investigating and writing for the DP and other outlets, have rehearsed and given performances in music, dance, and theater groups, have competed athletically at regional, national, and international levels, and have engaged passionately with the social, political, and environmental concerns of our time. Think now of your friends and classmates and yourself and take a moment to realize the depth and breadth of all you have achieved here in and beyond the classrooms. And while you're at it, make a note to thank your parents, guardians, and pre-college mentors who did so much to make this possible for you. As graduates of the college, you are now the holders of an academic credential that is distinctly American in its history and its promise for the future, a degree in the liberal arts and sciences. As you know better than anyone, what is characteristic of a liberal arts education is its great breadth of modes of inquiry and ways of approaching fundamental subjects. And indeed, I acknowledge that this breath was perhaps even a challenge at times as you made your way through the elements of the college's general requirement. But reflect now with great pride that as holders of a degree from the college, you can calculate, analyze, write, speak, interact across cultures both within and outside the U.S., can take account of history when considering the present and the future, can participate and appreciate in the arts in their diverse forms and manifestations, can recognize the value of real science in your everyday lives, and yes, can recognize BS, nonsense, and pseudoscience when you see it. The meaning of the liberal arts is there in what you have achieved. These are the ideal capacities of a free person in a global society, and they are now yours. <clears throat> And yours is a historic class. It has been many decades, really not since the 1960s and early 70s, since a college class graduated under circumstances as extraordinary as those we face now with the COVID-19 pandemic. You will leave the college into a world that is very different from what we might have imagined just a few months ago. But I speak for all of us here at Penn when I say that we know we will see you make sense of our times. Members of your class will produce the great works of art that help us understand this time, will become the scientists and social scientists who work to prevent another pandemic from happening, and will do the work of ensuring that the inequities this pandemic has exposed in our world diminish in the future. For this is what you have made yourselves capable of in all your academic work and engagement here. College class of 2020, this is not the end of our celebration of you. It is the beginning. All of us look forward to celebrating in person with you next year, but beyond this, we look forward to staying in touch personally and celebrating your successes into future years and decades. From all of us in the college, faculty, administrators, and staff, you have our deepest love and pride as graduates of our institution. Congratulations to all of you, the extraordinary class of 2020.
Our next speaker representing the class of 2020 is Lucy Hu. Lucy is from Auckland, New Zealand. She's a political science major with a minor in survey research and data analytics. This spring, her honors thesis jointly received the Leo S. Rowe Memorial Prize for the best thesis submitted on a topic related to comparative politics and or international relations. She was also inducted into Phi Beta Kappa. Lucy served as a student fellow with the Program on Opinion Research and Election Studies, where she conducted data analysis on midterm elections and the civic engagement of immigrants in Philadelphia and Atlanta. She also interned at the Penn Biden Center in Washington, D.C. During her junior year, Lucy studied at the University of Cambridge, writing a dissertation on race, immigration, and Brexit, which was published in the Dartmouth Undergraduate Journal of Politics, Economics, and World Affairs. She presented this research at the Ivy League Undergraduate Research Symposium in 2019. Lucy's campus activities included serving on the board of the Assembly of International Students, co-founding Australians and New Zealanders at Penn, and writing an opinion column for the Daily Pennsylvanian and winning its Columnist of the Year in 2017. After graduation, Lucy is moving to Washington, D.C. to join a political polling and public opinion firm. August 25th, 2016. Our first day of new student orientation. Remember pushing a move-in cart that blistering summer's day? Or getting your first pen card at Houston Hall? Or taking a picture of a squirrel on Locust Walk? That moment was 44 months ago. 1,361 days. 32,664 hours. Now, it's May 17th, 2020. It's not quite the 2020 we pictured when we sat on College Green during convocation. It's not really the senior spring we dreamed of on heyday last year. And it's definitely not the graduation we imagined even a few months ago. Today, we should be together on Franklin Field, wearing our gowns and taking pictures with each other. Instead, we are scattered across the globe, wearing our pajamas and taking screenshots of each other. But while time zones separate us, our memories of the last four years unite us. We owe it to ourselves to treasure those moments unabridged and uninterrupted. Thinking back to fall 2016, I can picture my first class in political science. Intro to American politics. Before the first lecture, I had no idea what the constitution really said. In fact, and I can admit this now, I didn't even know what Congress was. This was all jargon to an international student who had never lived anywhere but New Zealand. But by the end of the semester, I knew that gerrymandering was not a lizard, and I was hungry to find out more weird names and even weirder political practices. I fell in love with politics. I conducted research at Perry World House. And in no time, I found my home within the Penn Program on Opinion Research and Election Studies, where I was a Fox Leadership Fellow. As if Penn could offer any more, right? I spent my sophomore summer in Washington, D.C. On the very last day of my internship, on a sweltering afternoon at the end of July, I stood in the beautiful lobby in my blazer and heels, staring at the words Penn Biden Center and our school crest on the wall. As my eyes glided around the room, seeing the Capitol building through the windows on my right, I pictured sitting in my freshman fall lectures in B2 of Myerson Hall, learning about the role of the vice president. Less than two years later, I had now met one, worked with his foreign policy staff, taken notes at Senate hearings, and felt like an insider in Washington DC's policy circles. It's Penn, I thought. It's because of Penn. And as I stepped out onto Constitution Avenue that July day, I thought to myself, I sure know what Congress is now. Of course, I've had my fair share of academic mishaps, internship rejections, and personal failures. Failures that trap us into doubting our abilities. But there's a Chinese idiom my mother said to me before I started college that has guided me through my time here. If it's gold, it will shine no matter what. Four years ago, Dean Furter saw the gold in you. Even when someone can't see it, remember that it is there, and if it is there, it will eventually shine through. 
Equally, if not more important than this academic and professional growth, let's remember the personal memories that have defined college. Hanging out with our roommates, drinking hot chocolate on a snowy night, 1am study breaks in Hanwell rooftop lounge, delving into scholarly debates about whether water is wet. It is. These are the comforts we crave now more than ever. But through the isolation, I've seen the true gold of my friends shine through. We shine when we bake together on Zoom to keep each other company. We shine when we make crazy videos to make each other laugh. And we shine when we volunteer our time and ideas to help food banks, small businesses, and vulnerable communities through this global crisis. Ultimately, it is these choices that make us Penn students. The opportunities that we've had come with an immense responsibility, especially now. We have asked a lot of the last four years, and they've delivered. But now we must consider what the times ask of us. Penn has given us privilege. Penn has given us a pedestal. We do not have the option to stand there complacently. No, we must fight alongside those who do not have the privileges we do through policy, science, technology, and literature. May 17th, 2020. Our time is now. Let's not show the world what we can do with a Penn education. Let's show the world what we should do with a Penn education. I am delighted to introduce one of our distinguished arts and sciences faculty as a featured guest speaker. Emily Wilson is the College for Women class of 1963 term professor in the humanities and a professor in our world renowned Department of Classical Studies. She heads our graduate program in comparative literature and literary theory. Emily has received wide acclaim from both scholars and the press for her skillful 2017 translation of Homer's Odyssey. In particular, she has been praised for the way that her new translation helps modern audiences connect to this seminal ancient text to our world today. Among the accolades Emily has received in the wake of its publication have been a 2019 MacArthur Fellowship, known informally as the Genius Grant, and just a few weeks ago, a prestigious Guggenheim Fellowship. I am grateful to Emily for speaking today. I'm truly honored to be virtually present with all of you at a graduation ceremony unlike any other in Penn's long history. Thank you for joining me, wherever you are in the world. I want first to acknowledge that things are very hard right now in many different ways. This is a time of terrible loss. Some of you have lost family members. Some of you are far away from the people you love. Your families are suffering from terrifying economic losses and the loss of normal ways of life. Job prospects look very different now compared to a few months ago. All of you experienced huge, unexpected challenges during this past semester. You never anticipated this kind of graduation when you began at Penn four years ago. All of you have worked extraordinarily hard for this moment, and all of you deserve to celebrate your accomplishments with a joy and sense of excitement that can be hard to achieve in this time of physical distancing and lockdowns. Change can sometimes seem so total so overwhelming that we are paralyzed by it. Sometimes we stop feeling like ourselves. It's hard to keep moving, to keep on the journey or odyssey of our lives. I want to talk today about difficult journeys and about how to reach, how to meet the obstacles we encounter on the way. My main claim to fame is that I created a new translation of The Odyssey, capital O, an ancient Greek poem from around 3000 years ago. One of its most famous moments is when Odysseus and his men are trying to get through the narrow strait between two terrifying goddesses, one on either side. Charybdis, the cacophonous whirlpool who sucks whole ships down to the bottom of the sea, and Scylla, whose six dog-like mouths seize and crunch up human beings whole. Odysseus, a war veteran, responds in an entirely the wrong way to this unprecedented challenge. He ignores the excellent expert advice he's been given by another goddess, Circe, to keep moving as fast as possible, to get himself and his men out of the way. Instead, he 
He straps on his glorious battle armour, stands up looking all macho and impressive, and confronts the whirlpool, as if this were the same kind of challenge as those he's faced during the Trojan War, encountering mortal opponents on the battlefield. It doesn't go so well. While the leader is showing off, looking in the wrong direction, Scylla swoops down with all her six canine heads and swallows up six men. They never get home. It's a loss that can never be undone. When you're facing totally unprecedented kinds of challenge, you can't keep on using the same tool set. Nothing changes if nothing changes. Pandemics and other major natural disasters often herald vast, almost unimaginable social and political changes. They require humans to have the ability to change the paradigm, to be willing to rethink everything. To survive, we may need to change in ways we never imagined. Sophocles Oedipus wants to use the same skill set that has worked for him in the past to fix the terrible plague afflicting his city. He thinks he can do it by being quick and good at puzzles and smart. He doesn't realise it's a new kind of problem. The problem is himself. The most important thing I hope you've all learned during your time at Penn is there's always another way to look at every challenge. You're always all amazingly smart and hardworking, but you also know that being smart and hardworking isn't enough. Even if you're the smartest kid in the class, even if you've done all the homework, even if you have fantastic ideas and insights, you're always going to discover something new when you listen to other people and explore the vast, unpredictable, ever-changing world from new angles and with new sets of eyes. I hope that as college graduates from an elite institution, you take with you an awareness of your own responsibility. The Odyssey tells how one privileged person, Odysseus, successfully gets back home. But it's also about how many other people never make it, whether they're eaten, drowned, or killed in war, or they're in a socially subordinate position, so they never get a home that, of their own that belongs to them. They're always somebody's wife or enslaved by somebody else. I hope your time at Penn has taught you to listen and pay close attention to other people's perspectives, including marginalised voices, even when they're challenging or scary, and to be aware of how much is missing if we assume we already know everything and look only to our own side of the story. Be willing to start over, to realise all over again, like Socrates, you know nothing. Don't look only for the easiest or most convenient narrative. Challenge yourself and always be willing to change your mind. In a world where there's so much partisanship, so much mistrust of expertise, you as smart, well-educated college graduates need to fight as hard as you can to discover, acknowledge and tell the hard truths, the forgotten stories. And as you travel through life, don't think only of your own homecoming, your own personal journey. Think about how you can create a better world for people around you. Don't let your companions on this planet get eaten by the six-headed goddesses out there. Take care of each other and the world you're building together. We will never get back to Ithaca if Ithaca means a place in the past, but we can strive to make a better kind of community in the world of the future. As the Quaker saying goes, I shall pass this way but once. Any good that I can do or any kindness I can show to any human being, let me do it now for I shall not pass this way again. In your journey through life, I hope you will all take on big projects, aim high, change things for the better in your chosen field and make the world a better place. If it's hard to look far ahead in this moment, then in the immortal words of Anna from Frozen 2, a movie my kids and I have watched many times during the lockdown, take a step, step again, just do the next right thing. I've learned from my own work, translating big epic poems, that every massive undertaking can be broken down into small steps you do every day. The steps add up. I want you all to begin to take small steps every day to begin your own transformative epic journeys. I want you to step forward with courage, integrity and joy, with awareness of how much magical new energy your voices can bring in whatever you choose to do. There are so many different ways to be a hero or to be a goddess. 
You are amazing to have got through the last four years, and especially the last few months, and made it to this point. It's time to bring your talent and energy into a new world that needs you more than ever, to take on challenges unlike anything people have experienced before. I'm going to end by quoting from the contemporary poet Maggie Smith from her forthcoming collection. Quote, Remember that the ending of one thing is the beginning of another. Know that there is room enough in this life with its many endings, its many beginnings, for things you could not have imagined last week or last year or 10 years ago. Remember that you are playing the long game. Take your time making the life you want. Take your time, but do not stop. Keep moving. Well done, Penn graduates. Congratulations and good luck on the journey ahead. Thank you. Our deepest thanks to Professor Emily Wilson and to graduating senior Lucy Hu for their inspiring contributions to this college salute to the class of 2020. As we close this ceremony, please note that the college graduation webpage contains links to a graduation photograph gallery of the class of 2020, a role of majors in the college and the students graduating in each major, and video tributes from notable college alumni. From the college and the School of Arts and Sciences to all of you, graduates, families, guardians, and friends, our warmest congratulations to the college class of 2020. We will miss you, but we hope more than ever to see you again sometime next year when we all celebrate in person. For now, all the best from all of us.
Silver.